can fish be raised in the desert? A farmer in Gansu, China spent one billion to raise fish in the desert, but turned the desert into an oasis. In this video, let us learn more about it. At the junction of western Gansu and Xinjiang in China, there is a large desert, the Kumtag Desert. This desert covers an area of 32,000 square kilometers, with endless yellow sand as far as the eye can see. This is also the driest area in China. The climate is dry and lacks rain all year round. It is also called a forbidden area of life by many explorers. However, what is unexpected is that in such a desolate land, an old farmer from Gansu spent one billion to raise fish in the desert more than ten years ago. But after some investment, he almost lost all his money. At this time, his family and friends did not understand him. However, the old farmer said that as long as his idea succeeds, this desert will be his cornucopia. After he experienced life and death four times, this desert turned out to be the password to his wealth, as he said. So what is so different about this desert? Why did the old farmer choose to raise fish in the desert? This Gansa farmer who spent all his money to raise fish in the desert is called He Yenzhong. He Yenzhong was from Yongdeng, Gansu. Many years ago, Yongdeng was still a poor and backward small village. By chance, he read in the newspaper that the leader of North Korea presented a batch of rainbow trout to China and successfully cultured it in Heilongjiang. This made He Yenzhong, who had a lively mind, see business opportunities. After some research, it was found that the water quality of Yaowang Spring is particularly suitable for red fish. He Yenzhong hoped to set up a red fish farm with the villagers. The folks in Yongdeng were not well off at that time. First, they could not afford to buy fish fry. Second, they did not believe that Yaowang Spring can raise fish. He Yenzhong promised that as long as everyone is willing to work, he would cover all the expenses for digging fish ponds, diverting spring water, buying fish fry. In fact, He Yenzhong was not sure. For hundreds of years, due to the poor ecological environment in my hometown, no one has ever thought of breeding to make a fortune. Amidst the anxiety, He Yenzhong and the villagers carefully raised these treasures. A year later, when the first batch of fish came out of the pond, the income of the villagers increased hundreds of times. He Yenzhong, who was less than 30 years old, relied on fish farming and has assets exceeding hundreds of millions of yuan, making him a rich man envied by everyone. However, the story does not end here. He Yenzhong has a bigger dream. Yuanquan is just the beginning for He Yenzhong, not the end of his dream. In order to expand the fish farm, He Yenzhong has decided to continue his fish farming business in the desert. When it come to desert fish farming, everyone couldn't sit still. They all advised him that as long as he kept the Yaowang Spring, he would have nothing to worry about in his life. So why go to the desert to raise fish? Moreover, the desert is already short of water and loses water quickly. Raising fish in the desert is simply a fantasy. He Yenzhong's idea is not groundless. Although there is no water source in the desert, the desert is backed by glaciers. The water source after melting glaciers happens to be the water source for his farming. However, how to store this glacier water is a problem. In order to solve this problem, He Yenzhong decided to dig river channels. Digging river channels in the desert is not easy. Ordinary manual labor cannot dig at all, so they can only rely on professional digging tools. When He Yenzhong invited a professional excavation team over, he ran into trouble. The sand is loose, and even before professional excavation tools reached the excavation site, they were already trapped in the yellow sand and unable to move forward. 
Under many difficulties, He Yenzhong did not give up. Since there was no road, he built the road first. It took two years to build roads and dig river channels. The moment the desert breeding farm was built, He Yenzhong felt extremely relieved. But the good times didn't last long. Just as He Yenzhong was filled with joy and waiting for the fry to grow into big fish, disaster was coming quietly. In summer, glaciers melt faster and the amount of water increases. A flood swept through and destroyed He Yenzhong's breeding base. He Yenzhong lost more than 600,000 fish fry overnight. But the flood did not dampen He Yenzhong's confidence, and he soon cheered up and rebuilt the farm. It stands to reason that there should be no floods in the desert, but Yangguan town is located near the Chilean mountains. The ice on the mountains will melt during high temperatures and then gather together to form floods. He Yenzhong did not consider this when building the breeding farm. Therefore, no reservoirs and flood control measures were built, causing the farm to be destroyed. This loss was not small, and He Yenzhong lost tens of millions. Later, He Yenzhong learned his lesson and worked on waterproofing projects while rebuilding the breeding base. He led his companions to build several diversion dams near the Chilean mountains, which greatly reduced the flood hazard near Yangguan town. However, the waterproofing project was not even halfway completed when the perennial sandstorms in Yangguan town came again. This time the breeding farm was not able to withstand the damage and was soon destroyed by the sandstorm. In order to build this cold water fish farm in Yangguan town, He Yenzhong spent three years. As a result, he gained nothing from two disasters. Instead, he suffered heavy losses and almost lost all his property. Just when everyone thought He Yenzhong was giving up, he made an unexpected decision to rebuild the farm and plant trees. This was the beginning of the desert Dujianjian. The construction of this set started in 2006 and was not completed until 2019. A large-scale desert Dujianjian project not only created a good natural environment for the breeding farms in Yangguan town, but also further developed local desertification in Gansu. He Yenzhong's desert control experience has been vigorously promoted locally, and many counties and cities affected by deserts have begun to imitate He Yenzhong's experience. Over a long period of more than 10 years, He Yenzhong transformed from a businessman to a sand control defender. However, in the past 10 years or so, the construction of Dujianjian in the desert has not been smooth sailing. First of all, the project is huge, and since it was privately invested by He Yenzhong, there was not much liquidity available. The construction technology could not be compared with the infrastructure projects promoted by the Chinese state. Therefore, many people initially advised He Yenzhong not to invest so much money in sand control, but He Yenzhong refused to listen. Because he knew that if the problem of sand and flood control was not solved, Yangguan town would not be able to develop any industry, let alone breeding. In order to complete this flood and sand control project, He Yenzhong owed the outside world two billion. Secondly, it is life-threatening. In order to boost morale, He Yenzhong, as an investor, personally participated in the construction of the project. However, construction in the desert not only requires sand, but also has to withstand the blows of sandstorms. In order to do a good job in desert control work, He Yenzhong collected a lot of information related to desert control, and also spent a lot of money to invite many domestic and foreign experts to come and inspect. And based on the Dujianjian irrigation system in Sichuan, he came up with a unique solution. 
The Desert Dujianjian project is an infrastructure project integrating sand and flood control. Their first step was to build a 60 kilometers long waterproof dam near the Chilean mountains to prevent flooding from damaging the farms. At the same time, with reference to the geographical environment of Crescent Moon Spring, they identified the direction of wind and sand in Yangguan town and built sand barriers near the wind outlet. The effect of these sand barriers is excellent. Every 10 meters raised, the wind and sand can be pushed back 50 meters. Then a large protective forest and stone embankment were built behind the sand barrier to isolate all wind and sand. That crossed the sand barrier again. In this way, the damage caused by sandstorms to Yangguan town will be greatly reduced. However, these methods can only isolate the erosion of the Yangguan town breeding farm by wind and sand, but cannot completely suppress the sand. The best way is to make the desert sand less likely to be blown up by strong winds. For this reason, He Yenzhong led his companions to use clay to fix the sand in the local desert zone, so that the chance of sandstorms in the future would be greatly reduced. With the completion of Dujianjian in the desert, Yangguan town has gradually transformed from a desert town into a desert oasis. With the protection of Dujianjian in the desert, the breeding farm established by He Yenzhong in Yangguan town can finally operate normally, but the water source and the operation of the breeding farm have been protected. With the completion of the breeding farm, He Yenzhong's career is on the right track. He took advantage of Dujianjian to build a vineyard and a desert tourist belt, which together with the breeding plant became a multifunctional ecological park. It attracts many tourists every year, laying a solid foundation for the prosperity of Yangguan town. There are many stories like this in Chinese society. At the same time, He Yenzhong's success has also provided a lot of reference for many poor rural areas who want to get rid of poverty and become rich. Previously, many people speculated that his method would definitely cost money. Later, he said with a smile in an interview, I made a profit. In fact, this technology is not unique to China. In other regions outside China, such as the United States, Israel and other developed countries, they have built dozens of desert fisheries a long time ago. However, their fish farming method is to raise fisheries by extracting groundwater. This method can easily aggravate the impact of desertification. Compared with them, He Yenzhong's desert control methods are much better. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.